Hi, everybody, uh, and thank you very much for joining this Ask the Expert session. Uh, thank you for bearing with us with all the technical challenges that we have with the stream. Hi, everybody. Uh, I Hello. You, you, may have, you may have just cut off uh, the last of my sentence, I'm not quite sure. Uh, thank you for bearing with us for the, the technical challenges we had in the last session. Um, we're hopefully going to be able to run a shortened version of uh, the presentation that Kim and Arun were, were trying to do earlier on, uh, but you couldn't see the video. Uh, so we'll we'll try and run through some of the slides, uh, maybe some of the demos, and we can take questions as well. Uh, we're going to be able to keep a keep an eye on the chat and do that. Um, but I will hand over to Kim, and she can uh, hopefully <laughs> <very quickly start. laughs> all take, right uh, take us through some of the slides from that deck. Nothing like pre-recording something to make sure we don't have any hiccups, uh, and then having some hiccups. All right. Will, can you see the next slide on my screen? We can, yeah. OK, uh, so I'll kick it off. If Arun happens to join, feel free to let him interrupt me and take this part. Otherwise, uh, I'll jump in. So uh, this is a quote from Satya, and he's describing just what we've seen over the past couple months and this transition uh, to all of us getting, you know, staying at home and COVID really just turning upside down how we're getting work done. We've seen two years of digital transformation in the last two months. And a lot of that was credit to, to you folks on the call, right? Uh, the Power BI community, IT teams really jumping in and figuring out what to do. You know, and individuals have had, had to adapt working independently at home, teamwork and collaboration. You know, we can no longer walk down the hallway and ask a question. Um, everything's getting done through screens and through teams. Uh, and organizations have become a remote workforce basically overnight. Um, and, you know, it's been amazing to see how teams have adapted to that. So when we think about Power BI, really how we share and consume data, that must transform as well. So we're thinking about that in, in a few ways. Individuals, they need access to data always one click away. Teams, data needs to be infused into their online workplaces and into every conversation they have. And organizations need to entrust everyone with that data no matter where they are because we're no longer sitting in offices together. And that's data culture. And that's really, you know, from the beginning, Power BI has been all about driving a data culture for everyone, every decision at every scale. So uh, you may have noticed uh, we have new icons for the Power Platform. And uh, you know, the Power Platform is really one low code platform that allows you to enable insights, action, and automation, all uh, you know, built on top of the common data service, on top of data connectors and AI. And uh, we're really excited to talk about what we're doing with Power BI here today. So we're in the fifth year in a row of triple digit paid growth and uh, we're growing every day. The, the community is growing. We're over at one, one million community members and it's been amazing to see uh, our user groups switching to online and being able to even meet with some of our user groups in remote locations that I haven't been able to before. And, uh, you know, Lots of folks are recognizing this. Gartner recognizes us as a leader in analytics and BI. Forrester as well uh, said, you no longer need to be shy about using Microsoft Power BI. It's a killer platform. But when we think about why are organization, organizations standardizing on Power BI, um, it's really a combination of things. It's leading BI capabilities, super easy to use, fun to use. It's fully governed and trusted. So IT can really uh, trust that their users are doing the right things with the data and they can be confident that they're, it's secure. And finally, the best economics. Um, just, you know, that's why we've made Power BI desktop free. That's why we have low cost Power BI Pro and even lower when you get to premium for large enterprise companies. And that's why over 97% of the Fortune 500 uses Power BI today. And, you know, we have a couple exam examples of this. Make-A-Wish used Power BI to find families that were stranded on uh, different trips and cruise ships and got them home. Um, PayPal is using Teams and Power BI together to make meetings and uh, communication more data-driven. And Cummins, you know, they adopted self-serve analytics and they talk about how it's just exploded once they adopted Power BI. 
So our investment areas, um, we'll talk about a few of them in this session, and then in the next one, uh, we'll cover it with uh, Priya and Arun. So the first one is really about empowering every individual, making sure everything's easy to use, because without those individuals, uh, none of this matters, right? So making it data uh, at the hands of every everyone's fingertips. Empowering every team. BI uh, needs to be everywhere you get work done, um, and it needs to be infused in those conversations and those decisions. And so we'll talk about a number of those, whether that's uh, collaboration with Microsoft Teams, productivity with Excel, uh, and action with the Power Platform. And then finally, empowering every organization uh, to make sure that we scale to the most demanding enterprise needs. So we won't cover this last circle in this section. Priya and Arun will cover that in our next one, um, but we're gonna cover the first two here today. So it's clear that work has changed, right? We're all sitting here on Teams. I'm here presenting in my home office, talking to you all on Teams. And you know, we really think about data culture is for everyone and how do we continue to evolve that to make sure um, that we can get the best insights out of our data. So the first thing we, we, we wanna talk about is PowerPoint for data. We wanna make data as easy to use as PowerPoint whether that's how you move objects around the canvas, whether how you format things, how you click buttons on the ribbon, um, it needs to be instantly familiar and easy to use. And we know that the easier it is for end users to get started, the easier it is for entire organizations to adopt Power BI. We've made a lot of progress with our AI visuals over the years, over this last year. And we really think that the key is to make sure everyone can explore data without needing to be an analyst. And so whether it's finding key influencers, asking natural language questions, um, finding patterns in your data, um, these are as simple to use as dragging and dropping, and you can get um, you know, key insights without any statistical analysis knowledge or machine learning, it just works. So now I wanna show off a quick demo of our new capabilities we're announcing today, uh, smart narratives and anomaly detection. So for smart narratives, really, you know, sometimes it's just easier to tell a story with text uh, to, to explain in words what's going on. So you can see I can right click here and analyze this visual and Power BI will automatically generate a text description of what's going on in that visual. It'll give me trends, it'll tell me, you know, what's the growth rate here. And so this is one example of how you can use it, but I can go ahead and delete this and I can actually add a narrative about my entire report. So Power BI will generate a story about what's going on in all four visuals on the page. And it'll tell me revenues increasing and what's the difference between uh, you know, January and, and June. And of course I can format it. It's a visual so I can make it look beautiful. I can make it pop. I can customize the colors, but not only that, I can also customize the text. So I can go in and write a text description uh, as I would today in the Power BI text box, but there's something special here. I can go in and type a dynamic value so that when the data updates or when I slice and dice this data, the numbers will update as well. So I can go in and I can ask a nat natural language question. Um, so in this case, I can ask for the returns amount and Power BI will immediately return a value here. And when that gets inserted into the visual, now, whenever the data refreshes or I slice and dice, um, this value will update as well. So this is just more than your average text box. This is super powerful. We're really excited to see how you use it. But even better, if I go and wanna cross highlight this, so in this case, I wanna learn about outdoor products. I can click on outdoor and every visual will update. And because the smart narratives visual is just a visual, it will update as well. And my automatic insights as well as my custom ones uh, update on the fly. So that is our first visual we're announcing today. I wanted to show off one more that's coming very soon. And this is called anomaly detection. So here I have revenue by date um, and I can go in and I can ask Power BI to find anomalies in the data. And when I do, you see I immediately get, um, you know, error bars to see what's the range we're looking at and I get some anomalies pointed out. And of course I can customize it, I can change the shape, I can change the color, um, but beyond that, I can change the sensitivity of the algorithm. So maybe I want more anomalies, I want a more sensitive algorithm, and you'll see I get more right there. 
And if I click on one of these, Power BI will explain what might be driving those anomalies, what might be driving that spike, and it'll search my whole data model and give me some insights. Uh, but even further, I can customize this and I can tell Power BI which fields are relevant to this analysis. Which ones do I think, uh, you know, might be driving this? And I can drag those into the visual. I'll do seller and city. And now when you rerun that analysis, Power BI will do, do this with those fields, uh, restricted to those fields. So this is a really cool new capability. Smart Narratives is available today in Power BI Desktop, so download it, give it a try. Anomaly detection is coming very soon. So these are just two of the ways we're making it easier than ever for every individual to discover insights with their data. Now I wanted to quickly show off another super cool way to explore data in Power BI, and this is with augmented reality. So the HoloLens 2, um, is a newer device, and we've been investing in the Power BI side to make HoloLens work really well with data. So you'll see here the HoloLens 2 app is available now, and you can work with data in the physical space. So you can see here I can pull up reports from my tool belt, I can you know move them around, I can slice and dice and explore them. So this is just another way to explore data, um, you know, in the context of where your work is getting done. So you can see here I can change pages. And for the purposes of uh, this demo, since we're a little bit short on time, I'm going to run through this one. Um, so next up, I wanted to talk about uh, empowering every team with data. And a critical part of building a data culture is ensuring data is accessible when and where decisions are made. So when we think about powering every team, the first thing that comes to mind, given that we're all sitting here on Teams right now, is how Power BI and Microsoft Teams are coming together to infuse teamwork with data. So I'm going to jump into a demo here. And uh, let's play this since it's tough to demo on Teams when you're presenting on Teams. Um, so here I have a conversation going. I have my chats and channels. And you can see within our channel where we're getting our work done, we have Power BI reports embedded as a tab in the channel. This is a great way for the team to all get context and get on the same page when it comes to the data. So I can slice and dice and explore same way I would in Power BI. So you can see here, um, you know, we have, uh, let's keep going. So I have an activity where um, Megan is asking me, what's going on with Mondopolis? Why is it such a large gap to quota? So I can click on this link. And when I do, um, Power BI, <laughs> sorry, um, Power BI is actually going to open up in Teams. I didn't need to go anywhere else. I didn't need to jump around, fiddle with a browser. I can open this report right here in the context of that conversation. And better yet, um, because Alex sent me that link, it has the context of what she was looking at. So you can see here, um, Mondopolis is cross highlighted and I see everything's filtered to Mondopolis. She was asking me about the pipeline and yeah, it looks like op open opportunities are down. So I think I might have an answer to her question, but it's in a different Power BI report. So let me go back um, and look at Power BI Home. And another interesting thing just happened here. We are in Power BI embedded in Teams. So this is an awesome way for me to get quick access to my favorites and frequents, my recent content, um, apps that have been shared with me, and featured uh, reports from IT. So here's just my central place where I can go and access everything I need uh, with Power BI. It's a central hub for my data in Power BI. So this is awesome for a power user uh, like me who has lots of content in Power BI, but we also want to make it really easy to learn about Power BI for just getting started. So whether that's uh, access to our learning center where you can get training, dig into the documentation on how to use Power BI, join the Power BI community. It's also about um, being able to discover new sources of data, whether it's, you know, content created by Microsoft, by the Power BI community, or by tenant ad admins. This is a great way for new users to go find data that will make them more productive uh, and to learn and explore uh, Power BI at the same time. So let's go back to that report and you'll see here um, we have this customer churn and risk tracking app. So let's go into that and you'll see this is an app that uh, has been distributed for me and it's a great way to look at the details of the different customers. So you can see here I have all my customers 
and um, you know I can see the churn risk. And if I cross highlight on Mundopolis, um, oh, actually, first I wanted to show you uh, because this is an app, I can even embed Excel into this. So depending on the kinds of exploration you're doing, you can work with Excel content in Power BI, or you can work with Power BI content. And this can all get distributed in one app uh, really easily within Teams. So let's jump back to that churn risk analysis. And we can go ahead and let's right click on Mundopolis because that was the question we were trying to answer. Um, and if we right click to drill through, we can get the details on the, the uh, customer service here. And you can see, man, the product interactions have gone down a lot and customer service incidents have gone up a ton. So, uh, and the incident levels are really unsatisfied. So it does look like we have an issue with Mundopolis. And I can go ahead and share that back with Alex and we can continue the conversation. So I can click on chat and teams and I can share that with the group. And now she can go take action on that and she'll get this link with the same context that, that I was looking at. So you just saw Power BI embedded in Teams, a central hub for data in your organization. It's gonna be great to see organizations have data one click away, and we're gonna to continue to evolve this over time, making it easier and easier to find your frequent content, content spread out amongst Teams. Um, and the other cool thing we wanted to show you is the ability to quickly create content in Teams. So, you know, we know there's a lot of users out there that wanna work with data, but they're overwhelmed on how to get started. So what if you could just copy and paste or type in data directly into Teams? And Power BI will automatically generate a report on the fly for you to start exploring. And from there, you can tell Power BI which fields are interesting to you, and that automatically generated report will get updated on the fly. And to take it a step further, soon organizations will be able to discover data sets from across the organization directly in Teams. Whether it's certified data shared by IT or from a colleague sent to me in my team, I can easily browse those data, data sets, discover the lineage of the data, build reports off of pre-built templates and start finding insights immediately. I can also choose to analyze that data in Excel if I want. And this empowers users to really help themselves by making it easier to discover and collaborate on that data while IT continues to govern it, making sure they're relying on trustworthy sources. Next up, I wanted to talk about productivity. And this doesn't stop with just Microsoft Teams. We wanna make sure we're bringing shared and certified data sets everywhere users are. So here on the Power BI team, we love Excel, but we hear a lot from customers about Excel sprawl. So this is data floating around, different versions of the truth, unsecured and different file shares. So now directly in Excel, you can connect to shared and certified data sets. You can search across everything you have access to and you can quickly build a pivot table. This just gives you another way to explore your data even further uh, using Power BI and using the tools you know and love. And we're taking this a step further with Excel. We're allowing authors to publish Power BI tables to the Excel data types gallery. This enables users to combine the power of Power BI data sets with their knowledge and familiarity of the Excel grid. So you can see here, I can go in and add fields to my table. I can use formatting and formulas the way I know how, the way I've always known how. So Again, another way for end users to really work with data in a familiar way um, and for IT to feel good that they have trusted and secured data. Finally, let's talk about the Power Platform. We think of Power Platform as a virtuous cycle, turning insights into action and then automating it so, so uh, users get more and more efficient. And so, you know, it's one thing to find insights, but you need to be able to take action on it. And so we're making it easier for authors to build that action directly into their reports. We've seen a lot of success with the Power Apps visual in Power BI. Authors can embed a Power App directly in the report, allowing users to not only interact with the data, but actually to update it in the context of what they're looking at. Coming very soon to Power BI is a new Power Automate visual. 
So this allows authors to embed action directly into their report by putting a button on the page. And when end users click that button, it will kick off a workflow. And not only that, it'll add all the context of what the user was looking at. So, you know, say I want to kick off a marketing campaign, I can slice and dice and then immediately kick off that campaign with the push of a button. So we covered the first two circles around amazing data experiences and uh, you know, empowering teams with, with data. In our next session, Priya and Arun are gonna cover empowering every organization and how we scale to the most demanding enterprise needs. So I really do appreciate you guys sticking with us and bearing with us through the technical issues. And if you want a longer session of this, uh, you can go ahead at 815 PST. We're gonna replay the original session um, and get you guys the video. So again, thank you so much for bearing with us um, and stay safe and healthy. Thanks everybody. So Kim, there was a, a few questions in the chat about uh, the premium per user licensing. Um, I wonder if you can just give a quick uh, 30 second overview of, of uh, Priya, how that works and what that looks like. Priya is going to cover all of that in the next uh -huh. session. So I don't want to give up too much because she's going into <laughs> all the gory details. Um, and we actually have a deep dive in premium uh, with Christian Wade as well. So there's two other sessions coming up where they will go into all the details. We're so excited about that. Yeah, just uh, just very quickly. Um, so I was able to join, but a bit later. Um, but yes, so premium per user will be available later this calendar year. Uh, it has all the capabilities of premium uh, available on a per user basis, and it's completely free through through the preview period. So it'll be uh, starting preview later this year, probably in a, I would say in six to eight weeks or so. Uh, and during that time, uh, you know, everybody can try it. All of the premium capabilities available, um, and you know, give us some feedback. There's one other question which maybe you can answer. Uh, one of the uh, other data types in Excel feature, uh, is that E5 only or available for E3 and up? So yes, ha happy to share. So it's actually available for all Excel users. When we initially came out the point, it was planned for E5 only, but we got a lot of feedback from our customers and community members that we really should open this up and make it available to all, uh, uh, you know, all E3 and above Excel users. So that's what we did. Uh, so all yeah. Excel users, E3 and above, will get access to the Excel data types as well as, um, you know, uh, discovering Excel Power BI data sets in Excel. Hey everyone, I think during the initial rollout, you'll need a pro license to use it. So, so just be aware that it's E3 with a Power BI pro license. Thanks, Rakesh. There's a couple of questions about when the other sessions are. So Kim, can you just put that slide back up again? Oh yeah, good one. We'll let everybody else go and see that one. Uh, let's share my screen. And I'm just checking out the other questions. We'll pick some others if there's things that we can go talk about here. I saw a few questions earlier on. Uh, a couple of different people had asked about uh, the ability to join multiple models together in one in, in Power BI Desktop or in multiple connections to Power BI data sets. That's a, a feature that we call uh, composite models over analysis services or direct query over analysis services. Uh, and that's coming later this year. We're going to be previewing that um, before the end of the calendar year. Uh, and then we'll we'll uh, get to GA it uh, uh, next year, so calendar year 2021. Uh, so yeah, we can share Kim's slides here, so you can see there's, there's uh, a few different sessions over the uh, next couple of days where you can go watch various things that are related to Power BI. So I see some other questions about. Um, uh, the XMLA endpoint. Again, I don't know whether we've got anyone on the call who can answer that one. Uh, XMLA endpoint for Pro. Um, I don't know whether Wukash, whether you picked anything up about that or Arun, if you'd heard anything on that one. Yeah, as far as I know, XMLA update uh, endpoint is not going to be available for Pro. It's not on the plan, but it will be available for premium per user. Yes. Um, so as soon as it goes to public preview, you can try it all. Large data models, XMLA endpoint, paginated reports, all the AI capabilities. Um, so it's it's uh, it's going to be there very, very soon. Hey, one of the other questions that came up is people are trying to use the Teams app. They're excited and they want to use the Teams app right away. We're just in the process of starting the rollout of that app. So check back in the next week, week and a half, uh, and it should light up in your tenant. Uh, so you're just a little bit early. Uh, hold in there. It's coming. 
There's also a question about the security integration with, with uh, the security protocols behind the integration with Teams. We can share that. Maybe it's your your wheelhouse as well. Oh, sure. Yeah, happy to talk about that. So when we integrate Power BI into Microsoft Teams, we're leveraging all of the organization's SSO and governance policies. So when you see content within in Teams, it, we're actually validating that you're the right user for your organization, that you have permission to view that particular piece of content, uh, and then that you have access to the data. So if there's any kind of policies applied to that, you know, like Microsoft Information Protection Policies, you'll see those banners appear uh, when you view the item. If there's row level security applied, then you'll only see the data to which you have access. And of course, as you use uh, Power BI within Microsoft Teams, you will see audit log information generated by Power BI. So you'll be able to roll that up in Office 365 as well. If you're a Power BI administrator through the Power BI admin portal, you'll be able to access all the events and track them and see what usage is happening for uh, users within Teams. So I saw one other question in there, an architectural question about um, uh, using Azure Analysis Services, in particular using uh, Azure Synapse without Analysis Services in the middle. Um, and you can totally do that. That's exactly one of the things that we've been we've been working. The Power BI team have been working with the uh, Azure Synapse team to make sure that we've got a really close integration across those two products. Now, you, you may know Power BI at its heart, there is an analysis services engine, but it's not Azure Analysis Services, the product. You just use Power BI, point it at the Azure uh, Synapse uh, data set uh, and, uh, and away you go. So in terms of you know, are you affecting the report delivery speed? You're actually enhancing it. You know, we we spend a lot of time with that team to make sure that we can um, uh, either pull data if you want to work and import that data into Power BI, or leave the data in Azure Synapse, and we'll actually intelligently cache aggregations of that data to enhance the speed for people who are slicing and dicing at a high level and getting very aggregate results. But then, as you drill through it and you get down to the details, we'll go back to Synapse to say, "Hey, give me a, go and give me all that detail records." And so, Priya will give a demo of that whole thing in her session. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. There's another session later on. You'll see a lot more detail on that. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely a scenario that we want to make uh, we want to make work really well. Uh, so the question in the uh, which one is Christian Wade's session? Uh, does anybody know which of these is Christian's so session? So I know Priya's session is the first one, um, and then. I think premium, advancing Power BI premium uh, and beyond is is the one that will go into our, all the gory details. What is the difference between CDS and CDM? OK, I can have a stab at this one. So um, CDS and CDM really, really, really talk about the, the technology that things are built on and that this, this data storage engine is built on versus the schema and the structures of that data. Um, really, that's the way to think about it. Um, it's it's just technology that builds on or and then the definition of the actual uh, data structures. Again, there are tons of sessions out there. Go and go and search for those those acronyms and you'll find them uh, and they'll do a way better job than I ever could uh, of explaining how they all work. Uh, Greg asked something about has anyone done anything with consumer devices saying a ring doorbell piping in real time data? Um, real time is another big area for us to, to uh, uh, in terms of investment um, and Using Power Automate as a way to integrate with all of those other services uh, is certainly a way that you could pull in that real time data. Um, again, we may be talking about that in some of the other sessions. I, I am sure if you go and check out um, Priya's uh, session, we may talk about that a bit more there. Um, we may talk about that more in, in uh, some of the others. Uh, but go and check out what that Power Automate integration looks like. If there's a connector for it with Power Automate, you can certainly set that up. Some of those consumer things like doorbells, maybe they need something else, but I believe you can do Power Automate uh, integrations with things like if this, then that, which could call out to some of those consumer services um, as well. Great idea to then run the anomaly detection thing that we were just showing off on top <laughs> of that real time data. That's a great, great idea. OK, uh, we've probably got time for one more question. If anyone has spotted anything interesting in the chat. So one of the questions this is maybe for Arun and, and Kim is how do we trade off the uh, the investments in the back end services versus front end experiences. And if we can share some perspective on how we prioritize the work that we deliver into market. That, that's a good question. Um, 
I think we, we, you know, Kim talked about the three areas of investment, empowering every individual. That's about PowerPoint for data and the AI capabilities, empowering every team, making sure that the insights get into, you know, pretty much into office and into teams, and uh, you can move from insight to action to automation. And the third area, which is uh, empowering the whole organization, which is all our enterprise BI capabilities, you know, enterprise grade semantic models, picture perfect, paginated reporting, you know, application lifecycle management, et cetera. So these are the three areas we invest in across the team. In terms of the balance, I, you know, it's kind of hard to say because we haven't actually looked at it that way, but I would say probably two thirds maybe on the first two and a third on the on, on the third, uh, on the last, which is empowering the organization. So that would be my, uh, that would yeah. be my guess. And I'll say that we uh, are always listening to customers and asking for feedback and spending a lot of time with you all, where, whether it's the ideas forum or meeting with folks or looking at our customer support issues. Um, and so, you know, each kind of every six months or so, we'll rebalance that depending on what we're hearing from you guys. Absolutely. We love hearing from our customers and making those trade-offs. Yeah. We certainly do. Right. I think we're about out of time. So thank you all very much for thank joining. Thank you so much. Again, thank you for bearing with us with the challenges earlier on. You'll be able to see uh, all of the sessions on demand. We will get that other one posted up uh, so you can go and uh, check out these video, uh, these demos and videos and things again. Um, please, I just want to say, as we said, we love hearing feedback. Ideas.powerbi.com. Uh, that is the, the best place to submit any suggestions or requests you've got for other features. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. We'll uh, hear from you all again soon. Yeah, and we're going to stay on and answer some of these questions uh, as well. And then I would ask, also recommend people go to the Ask the, the Experts for uh, the Building Systems of Insights as well for some of the more uh, enterprise BI questions. Thank you. Thanks, folks.